Good morning. Okay, where are you at? Where are you at? All right. Carry me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Cause I can't say something. Yeah, you can hear me. Hold on. All right, say something. You can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna pray us in. All right. All right, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for using me and my sister Jamil, Father God, as your vessels, Lord. I ask that whoever needs to hear this message, Father God, I ask that you send them, Father God. Also come against the spirit of fear, and I sever it right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray, amen. Man, girl, I thought you were finna go in. <laughs> girl, I just woke up. Okay. When I heard I severed that spirit, I said, all right, now, nah, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Amen. <laughs> Yo, I can't, bro. Okay. So, do you want to tell everybody what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, so, all right, y'all. So, I know y'all remember us from Women After God's Own Heart. I know that we have not been on live and, like, together in a minute. Right. But today we're going to be talking about the spirit of... Good morning. Good today morning. we're going to talk about the spirit of religion versus relationship. So... Let me, well, first, I want to start with, um, the Lord was leading me to start, like, with my testimony when it comes to the spirit of religion. Okay. So, um, I grew up in a church. It was, um, kind of like Seventh Day Advance, Adventist, I think it's called, Seventh Day Adventist. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that, like, those people that, I, you know, that I went to church with don't love the Lord, because I believe that they do love the Lord, but it's like they were very like religious it's like they believe that like we couldn't eat no pork women had to like dress like a certain type of like way basically dressing like nuns and baby who put on dress like the nun bruh i'm not gonna dress like no nun and don't get me wrong it's like you know of course as women of god we're supposed to be modest and we are supposed to cover up you know we're supposed to cover up our breasts we're supposed to cover up you know our butt area you know not supposed to be showing you no know, you know stomach i understand that but you could still be a woman of god dressing modest and still be cute you know what i'm saying right like and it's like in the church that i grew up with it blew up, blew up in it's like they just didn't just understand that and you know they kind of went based off of like the old testament laws and it's just like what they fail to understand is that like the old testament law is literally just symbolic of jesus yeah. like that's it you know what i'm saying and it's just like yeah they, like girl i grew up not eating no pork like not eating no pork none of that and you know i kind of used to feel like that it's like that's what the spirit of religion like will do to you like it will make you feel condemned about the most littlest thing like i used to feel so bad about not celebrating the sabbath like which you know the sabbath you know um they say is on like saturday and you know i used to feel really like bad like sometimes you know i used to want to like go out and you know like my mom like she'll be like you know it's the sabbath you know what i'm saying and i'll just be like ma like it ain't that deep like you know what i'm saying we can celebrate jesus every day and that's who jesus is the sabbath the sabbath is the rest and who do we rest and we rest in the lord exactly. you know so and also i'm gonna pull up hold on i got some scriptures and that's crazy because it's like i had just yesterday like last night before i went to bed the Lord was just dropping more wisdom and and downloads when it comes to this topic. And it's like religion makes you feel like you're never doing enough. Right. Like I can't, I'm not good enough. I can't. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the same with the 613 laws that they had in the Old Testament. You, nobody was able to uphold those laws. It's right. too it's it's too much. It's like I got to be a robot. I have to do this. I have to do that. And God is not like taking tally of your works. Right. And that's the reason why also like we need Jesus because who can really, first of all, I didn't know that was that much laws. Like, I'm like, 
<laughs> but it's like who can really keep up with that you know what i'm saying and, and it's like what the lord was doing is he was showing that how yeah we can't do it only he can you know what i'm saying this is the reason why we need jesus a savior and that just goes to show even like in the new testament when the religious leaders like jesus he was healing a man on the sabbath day and they were like oh what is he doing right and on the Sabbath day, it's like they were so concerned about the law. Like, and oh, you know, you have to clean your hands before this. You have to clean your hands before you do that. You have to dress a certain way. You can't be healing anybody on the Sabbath. You can't be, you know, you can't be going. And you, that too, you can't be eating with sinners. And it's just like, that's religion. You know what I'm saying? It's like religion tries to separate you from the Lord. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know what I'm trying to say? It tries to separate you from the Lord. And it's like relationship brings you closer to God. But see, that's the thing too. Also, the Lord was telling me Christianity is real is religion, but it's purified religion. It's the true religion. Yeah, that's what the Lord was telling. And that's talking about the genes. True religion. You said, Girl, goodbye, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the one and only true religion. And you know, it's not about Oh, well, I have to do this. I have to do that. Like, yes, of course we should be. This is why the New Testament, it talks about summing up everything and loving God and loving everybody like you love yourself. It's the two main commandments that we need to worry about, but it covers everything because love co covers a multitude of sin. Right. And I got that too. <laughs> you got that one on there? Yeah. One thing I do want to talk about is like, so we have everybody looks at the Pharisees from, you know, the Bible and they're like, okay, these are, that was the old way of like life. That was the old way that they did things, but that spirit of religion, it still resides today, but it's just a modern way. Right. So before we get into our scriptures, do you want to like give some examples? Let's give some examples of what like a modern day um, Pharisee or Sadducee would be. Sadducee, Sadducee. Um, a modern Modern day religious leader to me is somebody who tries to appear one way on the outside, but on the inside, they're like washed up white tunes. Okay, Jesus. Like, that, that's what Jesus said. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And like, it's like they're basically like trying to appear like they're so holy and like righteous. And don't get me wrong, of course, the Lord causes people to be holy and righteous but the way that they make it seem they make it seem like on the outside you know you have to like dress like a certain way like they dress like you know they might wear like a suit or like a long dress yeah and, you know they're going around like with their bibles like preaching the word of god but at the same time like their heart isn't right with the lord like just like the lord said i forgot what bible verse it is but the lord says that their hearts are far away from me but they worship me with their lips right so it's just like, so it's like you, and that that's the thing too. You can know every single Bible verse. You could have read the Bible from front to back. But if your relationship with the, I'm sorry, y'all, it's like, I seen a gnat. That's what I'm like. But, um, but yeah, but it's like, you know, like you can know the Bible to front to back, but if your heart is far away from the Lord, then what's the point? And that's exactly what religious leaders, they do. It's like they know so much about the word of God. They can quote you scripture. They can, you know, try to like correct you. Right. They can tell you, you know, oh, you can't dress like that or you can't wear makeup or women can't wear jewelry or women can't do this or, you know, women can be pastors or apostles or prophets. prophets. They can't be prophets. Or they might say, um just all these other things but it's like their heart isn't right with the lord and it's like that too a religious spirit is also very like deceitful because they're not even aware like they think that they're such and right standing with god and they really think that they're doing the work of god but it's like all you're doing is just leading people astray because that's exactly what happened to me when i grew up in the church that i grew up in it's kind of just like i was like okay like nah this is like way too many like rules this is just like y'all doing too much right you know what i'm saying it's like yeah of course the law of the law of course the lord does have like you know standards but like how you just said it's all like it's all about loving god and loving your neighbor yeah like that is the law like even like back like in the old testament as far as even like not killing somebody that's that goes with loving your neighbor and loving the lord you know but it's like the like religious people they don't see it like that 
You know what I'm saying? It's like they try to just see it. They see it like in a carnal way and not in a spiritual way. Like a religious spirit is very carnal in their ways. And they literally read the word in a carnal way and not spiritual and not with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And like it's very condemning as far as just like the Pharisees were in the Bible. They're, they're so fixated on the outward appearance instead of like the bible says washing the inside of the cup because you can right. look a certain way and pretend to be one way like online you can be very deceiving mm -hmm. but then really get to know people and when you're walking with them or even like being around people you'll be able to see the fruit is not good and yeah. this other thing that i like a, a big issue a lot of the times religious people like to point out other people's sins because mm -hmm. it makes about themselves right and they're about the sin that they're trying to cover up so a lot of the times we will get those you know they, they've come to me on oh you got tattoos and and those are really <laughs> really people and it's like half of them aren't even christian the people that are coming for but it's like because so many of the pharisee people have been like condemning people in the world that's like the appearance that Christianity has. It's like well, we're judgmental, but we're hypocrites because we have Pharisees pointing out the world's sin instead of getting their self together. Right. It takes me to my first scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 5. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Right. There are many people that I can even say they had a form of godliness. They portray themselves to be one way on the internet. They portray themselves to be one way at church. They mm -hmm. might be dressing and looking one way when you see them, but then they're living like a devil at, at home right. or on the week. And it's like, you're doing ministry. You're living a double life. Right. And that's what, that is what Jesus talks about with the Pharisees. You're more you're more worried about your outward appearance and upholding the laws and pointing the finger at people than getting your heart in order and caring about the people. Right. Caring about their sin, caring about what they're going through. Because if we were to care more and we were to do more for those people, that will bring them out of darkness. But, right. you know, we have so many Pharisees in the body of Christ that it makes it harder. And even like us, the Lord has raised us up. Number one, we're, we're going to be bold. We oppose the spirit of religion because who who are you going to tell us we can't hear from the Lord just because we look the way that we look, just the way we talk, the way that we talk or whatever. The yeah. Lord is using more people that look like us and sound like us to do his work because he's tired of the ones that are pretending and they're not doing anything. You right. guys are more people away from God than bringing them in. You right. know, like people like us are going to carry the fullness of of the Holy Spirit that's going to actually help people. Right. And it's going to on those mental blockages of, oh, well, this person's a Christian, so they're automatically judging me. Right. No. Right. And that too is something that I want to bring up. Like, if you do, you know, dress like, um, you know, very like down to earth, you know, you like long skirts, you know, like turtleneck. You said what? Down to earth. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know what type of style to call it. But, you know, if you do want to wear a suit, that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just your style. But it's about your heart posture. Yeah. That's what it is. And that, too, um, the first scripture that I wrote um, is Matthew 12, 14. And the fairies went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. That, too, the spirit of religion kills. Come on. It kills your relationship on. with the Lord. It Kills like it kills like your spirit because it's like how like you know how I was talking about earlier I felt literally condensed because I wanted to eat some pepperoni pizza like you know what I'm saying like or you know like I wanted to eat um like seafood like shrimp you know the first time that I really had shrimp or even pork was like a few years ago because of how I grew up that's crazy like and yeah and it's like, is, it's like who wants to serve a god like that the exact Exactly, exactly. And that's why I'm saying how the spirit of religion, it kills you spiritually because it kills your relationship with the Lord. And it's just like the Lord is the source of our life. So it's like if the enemy can get you to get away from God, he has you right where he wants you. And he can spiritually kill you and just come in and just like destroy your life. And this is exactly what many people are going through. And even and it's like what I'm about to say oh well take it how you want but those who have ears you better hear you feel me 
because it's like even like with these churches now i don't want nobody to take what i'm saying like the wrong way or twist my words because people like to do that there is nothing wrong with church i understand that god has risen up church buildings he has risen up pastors to shepherd over his people it is biblical i understand that but a lot of these churches are based off of like a religious organization and they're not even flowing with the spirit of god and because there is a spirit of religion inside of a lot of these churches it quenches the holy spirit what oh, i just wrote that about you read that about who i wrote that in my notes last night go ahead yeah because like it really like does like it quenches like this it, it quenches like the spirit of god because it's like okay like let's just say like you know, like some religious, like some religious people would take scripture and they'll be like, oh, you can't speak in tongues unless an interpreter is there. Right. And so, you know, you feel like, you know, you're in church or you're at like a revival and, you know, you're worshiping the Lord and, you know, all of a sudden you feel Holy Spirit push you to speak in tongues. Now you're kind of just like, well, you know, the pastor was just talking about the other day how, you know, in order to speak in tongues, you know, you need an interpreter. Now you're just like, but the Lord is telling you to speak in tongues. Right. That too spirit of religion can cause you to be disobedient to God and can call and it also and it also rides along with um the spirit of pride yes that too because it's like your heart is hardened and most importantly your ears are hardened to what the Lord is saying through other people you don't want to hear because you're so stuck in your ways just like the religious leaders was back in Jesus time they couldn't even see that Jesus was God because they were so stuck in just their ways oh abraham is our father oh isaac is our father right. and it's just like you don't see that like your savior who y'all who it was written in y'all torah in the old testament they're talking about is right in front of you and that too and you can't see it. huh and you can't see it right you you can't see it at all and you know i feel like honestly and this is just my opinion i feel like a lot of people who grew up in like church need some type of deliverance or some type of mindset broken from the spirit of religion right because you have to understand like yes the lord and i'm not saying that these people who are in the churches aren't real men and women of god i'm not saying that but it's just like it's like church has like its own way of like moving not every church now now there are some churches out here who are you know like they're not quenching the holy spirit they got the fire of god you know they're obedient to the lord they're moving in a way that you know is not you know is not common to you know a lot of churches but it's like a lot of these churches it's like they run by like what they're so used to and this is exactly what happened right and exactly Exactly, and this is exactly what, and see this, see, this is another reason why the religious leaders wanted to kill Jesus was because he broke their man-made tradition. Religion is very, very traditional. You know, oh, well, we used to do this in 1950. Well, this is a new time. You said this what? This is a new time. Right. Hey, that's why I was- This is our- The Bible even says that the, the latter will be greater than the formal because- we are going to do different things right. that they didn't do. We're actually going to be led by the spirit of God. And the thing about the Pharisees is like, like you said, they also run with that spirit of pride. And it's very hard to speak to somebody who has pride. They don't want to hear nothing they don't that want you've got to say. Nothing and at all. I do believe because when I first got saved, the Lord had sent me an, an exodus to get out of where I was at, to get my life together. And I was put with someone who was, you know, who taught me how to pray, taught me how to, you know, war in the spirit and do certain things. And, you know, that ended up, I got what I needed and it was time to go. Right. So then once I got out of that situation, the Lord had to break different things off of me because there was a lot of man-made religious right. things within right. that person that they put into me. Right. So the Lord had to uproot those things because I was becoming very religious as well. And I feel like the church, they want to, I mean, I feel like most of the people in the church, they have a good heart as to wanting to abide by the biblical principles. But it's like, at the end of the day, if you're stepping to where like it, it becomes just like tradition and you're not caring about the souls and you have walked in what a Pharisee does because yeah. I Day, we should always be edifying the body edifying the people so okay you know we might have someone that and this is like the video that i made you may have 
a church and, and a um, transgender comes in there or so, a stripper, a prostitute, somebody that comes in off the street and they look how they look, mm -hmm. are you going to turn them away? Because God is very well testing how your heart is towards that person. God right. very well sent that person just to test you. What right. are you going to do? Are you going to say, you know, disrupt the whole service and be like, hey, you got to get out of here, go change your clothes? Right. Are you going to pull this person to the side and still love on them and give them what they need because that's why they're there? Or right. are you going to continue to point the finger at people showing no love? Right. Because even if you have all the knowledge in the world, you're doing deliverance, you're helping people do this and do that. If you don't have no love, all of that is in vain. At the right. end of the day, what are you doing it for? Right, right right yeah yeah and that's exactly what the spirit of like religion like will do too like it'll push people away who was just coming into like the lord like and i know everybody has seen that but it's this picture that went viral and it's this woman and she's on her knees and she's in church but she has on like a very like revealing like dress like you can almost see like her butt out and a lot of people were saying like oh like you know like what would you do if you seen her like would you tell her oh she can't come in here like that or would you like just allow her to be because you know she's you know obviously um talking to the lord and it's just like we have to understand like everybody goes through a sanctification process right you get what I'm saying? And it's like, I under, and it's like, you know, I understand, you know, the Lord calls us to correct our brothers and sisters in Christ. But it's like, if somebody is coming into the faith and like, they're like new, something that we have to understand is that, yeah, they might dress like they're still out in the world. But it's like, you have to allow God, unless the Lord tells you to say something to that person, but you have to allow God to sanctify them. He will tell them, all right, you know what? Like, you got to throw out all your clothes that you used to go to the club with. That's what the Lord did to me. To me when too. I was in the Christ, I was still, you know what I'm trying to say, boobs out, crop top, you know what I'm trying to say, booty shorts. But it's like the Lord, and nobody didn't tell me anything. Right. I think I think that my mom, because my mom's a Christian, so my mom did. But I kind of was just like, girl. <laughs> nobody told me. Nobody told me. And see, that's another thing. When when man tries to convict someone, right. it's kind of. Yeah. So you right. have a lot of right. those to God to do that and also like I remember there was this one time I'll never forget like I had was about to go outside to do something or go to the store and I had heard the Holy Spirit say you need to change and like it it wasn't like where he like spoke it but it was like a feeling like I like, felt exposed yeah, yeah. I, I, but I felt exposed like my my bottom like I was like hold on I feel like naked and so he was impressing that on me for me to feel conviction yeah and then wasn't nobody telling me that because I probably would have been like you know yeah like who you talking to me? <laughs> but, but hold on, let me read the comments real quick hold on. I don't even know we had this much comments I'm crying. People with religious spirits seem blind and innocent. They are blind and they need deliverance. Good morning. Good morning. What, so, what would you say to... Is that what you're about to read? Yeah. Okay, what would you say to sin even with repentance? Yes. Wait. It went away. Yes, we are sinners, but in repentance, we should be turning away. But how do we show our love for God and still be ourselves without being overly religious? Um, help me, Holy Spirit. Um, guys, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I just woke up, y'all. So, I'm hold crying. On. No, you up. I am up. You're right. Shoot. Okay, what would you say to sin even with repentance? I mean, like, can you explain more? Because yeah. I don't really understand what you mean by you say, what would you say to sin even with repentance? Because if you're walking in repentance, you're not living a lifestyle of sin. Like, you get what I'm saying? Yes, we are sinners. should be turning away. Let me see. Yeah, I don't really understand, I understand your question. Love God and still be ourselves without being over-religious. Um, <clears throat> well... You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to give you an example because this, this is how the Holy Spirit is leaving me. It's like, you know, when I was out in the world, I was very, like, wild. <laughs> like, I was the type to, like, jump on top of cars, like, and just start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be up in the club on top of, like, the table just, like, dancing, like, you know, twerking, all that, with a pop in a bottle, had me like weed in my aunt my hand and hitting the other you know what i'm saying 
so I would, and also I was very outgoing, but now that I am in God, of course, I no longer do those things, but I'm still, um, <laughs> I'm where do you What? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I don't want you to but, but, but I'm still outgoing, you know, I'm still a people's person, you know, I still love to laugh, you know, I still love to, you know, be loud, but in God, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still myself. <laughs> But in God, well, I'm not going to say I'm still myself because I'm not. But it's like, I am who the Lord created me to be. Right. You get what I'm saying? Because it's like, when we were out in the world, we were still ourselves, but we were like the like perverted yeah. type. Saying yeah. it's like, you, you know, so it's like, if you was like more laid back when you was out in the world, and now that you're in Christ, you're more laid back, that's just how you are. Same thing with like me and Jamil. We were outgoing in the world, talking to everybody. That's how we are in Christ. Especially this one. That girl, outgoing in <laughs> Air you know my friends. Since I was a little kid, I, my mom said I was meeting people at the laundromat, inviting them to my birthday party. <laughs> like, Girl, you know, all these people, and and I just always had that in me. But she said some. She said something where a lady was speaking at the church, going into detail about what she had done sexually. I believe prostitution, and they cut the mic off. Oh, I seen that video. <laughs> I didn't see that. But first of all, I mean, like I said, there that's a setting to where you should be able to be vocal. Now, if there's children in there, a lot of times churches have children's area for children to be yeah. at. at a certain age, you're able to go into, you know, the regular part of the church. But like, I don't even agree with that. Let that woman tell her testimony because there's so much power and healing that comes from that. And then when you do things like that, you allow them to believe that that's shameful. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. not, well, your testimony is not shameful. I don't care how many people you've had sex with. I don't care how many drugs you've done. That's not shameful because that very rawness that you bring from your testimony is going to be what reaches somebody who's still in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, no, I'm sorry. Right, go ahead. No, I said just it's to help them. Right. And that's too. Like when I first started out in ministry as well, too, because it's like I still had like some religious mindsets. I kind of felt like I couldn't be myself as well, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, I kind of felt like I had to be like, you know, well, you know, hi, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I had to be like that. But the I was like, girl. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> but the Lord was just like, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, that's not how you are. Like, be who you are in me. And, like, now I'm more of, like, myself. Well, I am myself when I'm making videos or when I'm doing ministry. And that's the thing, too. Like, the spirit of religion can quench the gifts of the spirit inside of you. Come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, my gift. Well, not my gift, but, you know, how I am is how I am. Like, you know, and how somebody else is how they are. That's who the Lord created them to be. But it's like, if you grew up around, like, you know, like a religious, like, personal, like, religious, like, churches, they can make it seem like how you are or even telling your testimony. Oh, no, you shouldn't say that because that might scare people away. But it's like people want to heal. I say heal. Well, people do want to heal. Amen. But people want to, <laughs> but people want to like, you know, they want to hear like the realness, the rawness. And it's just like, you know, I seen that video. So I know exactly what you're talking about, sis. And it's just like, you know, that that pastor should have let that woman like, like speak, you know, because it's like somebody in that church could have came in being a prostitute and you never know the lord could have like used that woman yeah. and so it's like, see now it's like you're cutting into the way of god's souls and god does not play about souls and the blood will be on your hands especially with you being a pastor and you're not allowing somebody to tell their testimony but see this is what the spirit of religion religion does like how i said it quenches the spirit of god and it quenches our gifts and it also will quench you from being real and being raw and this is exactly what people especially people out in the world and who are just coming into christ they need to see okay you know what she used to be in the street just like me she used to be outside you know getting high getting drunk being 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 in clubs just like me you know what i'm saying and now she you know and now she's living for god she stopped okay you know i like that that's real that's raw you know what i'm saying like people need to see that yeah and then it's just like you know right here what is it matthew 23 13 it says but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you shut up the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. for ye neither go go in yourselves neither shall neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in so not only because you're being a hypocrite you're shutting up the kingdom of heaven on yourself and others because you're not really living that life mm -hmm. and you're you're 
putting up this persona to make people feel like they're not good enough or they have to do x y and z for them to enter into the kingdom right it's like yes there is a sanctification process that we all go through yes we need to hear the real and the raw but the whole thing about being a hypocrite it's like you're putting on this front number one you have insecurities because they can't be their true self and i do believe like the spirit of religion it is like a lot of it's passed down like generational yeah, stuff it, because it it you grew up in church your whole life and then it's supposed to be this way and then when you do something else then you're like condemned by everybody and it makes it hard because people don't like to go against the grain people yeah. and this is why god is bringing more people like us that are bold because we're not going to turn a blind eye to something i just i never was like that in the world i'm not going to yeah. do that now if i yeah, do something better. wrong you, you better believe i'm going to say yeah. it like if i would that church and that would have happened i would have been like i would have said something i wouldn't have been able to keep it in i would be yeah. like oh you wrong or something i would have yeah. said that because yeah. you're cutting off you're quenching the spirit of god yeah you're yeah. and and even like so the church that we were at we there was a uh uh <laughs> whatever you want to call it when i got there you know he was always speaking against praying in tongues yeah yeah. And, but then whenever the spirit would fall, you yeah. would be speaking in tongues. And that is being a hypocrite because you're not teaching the congregation that right. hey, you're not teaching the trueness of the word. And then your actions are doing something totally different. And it was to the point where I didn't even really want to pray in tongues yeah. there. I was just about to say that. I was about to say, um, you know, because it's like even like with the spirit. Right. It exactly and even with us being like in that and for you those of y'all who don't know you can go on jamil's page and see um a testimony that she did with a, our sister in christ named amber we was in this church um called voice of healing ran by um michael petro and it was it's, it's a call that that's all i'm gonna say because that video that video i mean like this we're not talking about that but if y'all want to go check that out y'all can but anyways um but the church that we were in it's like yeah i said the same exact thing i'm just like how are you like preaching against and that's who was like you're talking about some blah blah blah, blah. like it's like you're you, you're mocking like, you're mocking yeah, so. uh, right but then yet yeah, as soon as we would be up in there praying it's like you're speaking in tongues and i would hear some of like the church leaders speak in tongues yeah and i'm like i don't want to say and, like how you said i'll be like dang lord i don't even want to speak in tongues because i don't want nobody looking at me like you know what i'm saying but it's like and that's what i mean like it quenches holy spirit and it quenches what the spirit wants to do it's like who it's like who known it's like if i would have been speaking in tongues i could have been interceding for somebody in the hotel yeah you know what i'm saying like or i could have been interceding for you know who knows you know what i'm saying um and another scripture but, um I, I was just gonna say you know even being a hypocrite it makes you very double-minded and unstable so yeah. this is why you know, William was one of the ones that prophesied to me that the Lord said that I'm going, I, a lot of people don't like me because I'm going to oppose the spirit of religion. So if you have any bit of religion in you and we are communicating and we're friends, I'm going to offend you. Yeah. It's just, and, and it's not even on purpose, but I'm going to challenge that spirit of religion in you. And hopefully you're able to see and come out of it. Yeah. Like there was somebody else who I was dealing with who was very religious and, you know, always talked about seeking man and counsel from people instead of going to the holy spirit which it's yes we're, we have elders in the church and we're supposed to take heed when they're giving wisdom and pouring into you but that shouldn't be the main source god is the main source right and so this person was upholding you know this type of oh well you know i have these people that i go to basically not wanting to hear what the spirit of god had to say through me and that's okay because people aren't always going to accept you people aren't always going to want to hear or hearken to the spirit of god that's coming from you because it's coming from you yeah so yeah. At the, end of the day you know i i walked with this person and i seen that they were living a double life right you can't be out here saying that you're doing this and doing ministry all online but then when you're at home you're doing other things that do not align with scripture and then when i oppose those things you're trying to say well i can take you to this person and they'll tell you what i'm doing is right how about let's go to the word of god right that it's wrong right because the spirit of religion they cover each other uh, right 
end of the day, man can be wrong. And like how you said, there's nothing wrong with seeking wise counsel because I understand that like the word of God does say to seek wise counsel because the Lord has risen up people who do have the gift of wisdom and you know, the Lord would use them. But at the end of the day, we should take back what anybody is saying to us, to God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, that too, with, with the spirit of religion comes um, idolizing mm -hmm. man a yeah. lot a lot yeah you know what I'm saying it's like at the end of the day respect your leaders respect you know your spiritual mother your spiritual father respect your pastors i'm not saying to be disrespectful towards them give honor when it's due right i understand that because the lord commands that we do that i really do get that but we should never on god's green earth put anybody above jesus we should never do that like but that's exactly what the spirit of religion does like even like with the religious leaders in Jesus' time, it's like they put it the Old Testament law yeah. over, the Lord. over the Lord. How you wrote it? How you going to tell like, you feel me? Right. Like and that's the whole thing. Like people that are filled with this spirit of religion that is combined with the spirit of pride, they don't understand spiritual things. They don't understand when a person that is filled with the spirit of God is is t trying to teach or tell them something because it's yeah. like so oh, i'm going off of this because you know this is what's comfortable right this is what I'm going for so long but god wants us to break that comfortability right okay. and it's like depending on okay well we've been doing it for this long this okay. way god will very you will very m well miss god for continuing to do the same thing over and right. over and over and over okay. right and it's like the lord is a god who is always doing new things it even says that in the book of isaiah you know what i'm saying like in the beginning of genesis like the lord was was moving over the crosses of the waters he was moving he wasn't being still he was moving the lord is always moving he's always doing something because he's god there's it's, it's you know he, he he got work to do you know what i'm saying but it's like with us and we you know we are supposed to be like god and those who are in christ we're supposed to be his children we're supposed to be you know aligned with the lord we're supposed to be doing things how the lord wants us to do it not like you know staying like the same and putting the lord in a box you know what i'm saying like the lord had definitely like broke my mind like last year while we was you know in texas yeah. like it was, like a lot of stuff like going on that i was like yeah i definitely cannot put the lord in a you box because the moment that you put the Lord in the he box, will show and you. this is for people who are really seeking after the Lord, though. Because if you're putting him in a box and you're not really like trying to go deeper with the Lord, then you won't see it. But if you're yeah. really for God and you put him in the box, he will blow your mind in a way that you'll be like, oh my gosh, like, okay, Lord, I will never put you in a box right. again. Even right. for people who think that they know that the way that God moves, you don't always know the way he's moving. Right. He ever, he's changing all the time, changing the way that he does things. So we can't never just pinpoint what God's going to do and what's his next move. Right. We, we will be left dumbfounded every time. Right, right. Someone said in the Amplified Study Bible, it's called Phariseeism. We know that we know they were very religious and didn't know God while he was with them. And that's the whole thing. Somebody can be in your very face or in your church and they have the spirit of God, but you are allowing the, the spirit of religion and pride to drain and choke out the anointing in your life mm -hmm. that you're deeming them. Oh, this person is doing something weird. They might be demonic. They might not really be of God or they're carnal. And it's like God will very well bring spiritual people into a religious scene to try to pull people out of it. But right. it's up to you to be able to say, okay, let me cast this stuff down because I'm not going to lie. Whenever I did first come into Christ and I was around, you know, these religious people and going to this church, number one, it almost turned me away from church in itself because, you know, I was tithing a lot of money into the church and I'm just trying to do everything that I think that is going to please them because I wanted to be right with God. And I'm like, they have a church, so obviously they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But then I started seeing slander and gossip, people talking about each other, trying to turn me against people. And it's just like, y'all are way more messier than the people in the world. I'm like, I came from the church, so why am I dealing with this in Christ? I don't want to be this way anymore. And it just really like kind of messed up my mental at that time. And then when I got out of it, because the Lord, there a lot of times, we don't have community, so we're searching for it in churches. We're searching for it everywhere. And so the three different times that I have 
pushed myself to go to church thinking this is the way I have to do it. God has pulled me out of those churches. Right. So you may very well be in a season where God wants to pour into you and teach you so that you won't be deceived when it is time for you to go to a church because right. these people are very deceptive and they feel like because they're behind the pulpit and they know something that you may not know that they can easily manipulate you and pimp mm -hmm. your kids out. Yeah. And so you will notice when you're around religious people that your anointing could be drained because even when we yeah. were there, I wasn't like feeling and hearing and it, it wasn't as potent as it was before I got there. I started to like almost dumb myself down spiritually because I'm trying to get all this knowledge, these mysteries that I felt like, you know, I needed, which some of the stuff was true, but even a half truth is still a lie. Yeah. So you get around these places and these people that are very religious it starts to make you like try to conform because that's what they're doing they want you yeah. to do what they're doing and yeah. it's the spirit of god um when i was at when i went to texas the first time when i was staying with someone um this person literally was trying to do the same thing so every situation that i'm faced with it's always i'm starting to see it's, it's somebody that's dealing with the spirit of religion and pride yeah and so there's always an issue with me and them because you know i'm as spirit filled and led as i try to be like i'm pulling from god's spirit as much as i can trying to get filled up because i i want to be right with him but it always comes to this opposition with these people but she literally was telling me and this is before i even knew all the gifts god would have me in so many different things i was calling corporate fast i was helping mentor people i would be teaching on you know line i was just i was doing different things and i didn't know that that was like the building like that's what apostles do and the lord kept speaking that to me but i i still was just in my word just digging and diving into it trying to get closer to him and she told me she's like let me help you like you don't have to wear all these different hats i see you doing one thing here one thing there and she just kept trying to box me in and the lord it was like draining me and the lord was trying to tell me then like i've called you to do all these different things because i'm showing you who you are and mm -hmm. she was just trying to put me in a box saying you're only supposed to do this and i was trying to like rationalize it because i'm like well i'm here with her and she has been doing this longer than me so maybe she is right and then the lord had to take, remove me from that situation too because she was trying to like quench the gifts that i had right spirit of religion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. girl they despised me at church even spoke poorly on the pulpit concerning me sarcastically <clears throat> that's another thing why are you like a lot of i see people do this a lot of pastors it's like they even they they are filled with pride they want the applause of their congregation and of man a lot of people go up there behind the pulpit to talk about people and it's like if you're supposed to be the shepherd of that church why are you why are we not doing better how are yeah. we implementing the holy spirit and and the laws in our heart we're we're reading from the bible we're studying the bible but we're filled with pride and deception and it's like when are, when are the people going to see like even people of leadership like let me not be too prideful and boastful to where i think i know it all so when somebody is coming to me like a david mm -hmm. then i'm going to take heed because god will send somebody i'm trying to tell you and you know this why we were even at the church that we were in we were supposed to do things but because we were not hurt spiritually it wasn't able to happen yeah you know so so many things can be like revealed through the spirit of God opposed to the spirit of religion and what things are supposed to look like. But it doesn't matter when you're being led by God. We have yeah. to start getting so like, oh, I know, I know what God's doing. I know that I hear from God and I don't want to take anybody's counsel. Absolutely not. Yeah. We that again. Right. Trying to pull out. Right. A spirit and this person not taking heed. So yeah yeah and that too like also it's like you know like our jobs as like believers is to bring people like closer to god like in his heart and it's like you know in jeremiah 29 13 the lord says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart and it's like with the spirit of religion like it causes you not to seek the heart of god because it's like you're you're either consciously or subconsciously placing the lord in a box and it's like 
you know, a lot of people I see saying, like, even, like, with me, like, um, you know, like, some sometimes, like, I'll get inboxes from, like, different, like, people, and they'll be like, oh, you know, I want a relationship with the Lord like you do. And I'm like, you can have a relationship with the Lord, a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord. You have to just search out his heart. You cannot place the Lord in a box and just be like, okay, the Lord's going to just move this way, or he's going to, oh, he's going to just, or he's just going to just do this this way, when it's just like, no, that's not true. You know, and it's like, the spirit of like religion it quenches your relationship with the lord you know what i'm saying it quenches you to really seek god with all of your heart because it's like you're placing god in a box and you're saying well the lord wouldn't say that like even like with me like you know what i'm saying like um like you know i'm like one time i had told somebody something and they're like oh the lord really said that to you yeah like <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? But it's just like you're placing God in a box because you don't believe that the Lord can speak or you don't believe that he will say this thing. But it's like, what do you mean? If you look all in the Bible, you see the Lord speaking to people all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like with Samuel, he, with Samuel, he calls out Samuel's name in the middle of the nighttime. The Lord speaks to his people. The Lord is a very intimate and passionate God. Like, why would he not want a personal relationship with us? And he does. And it's like, you know, the Lord wants a deep, intimate relationship with, with all of us. But it's like, it's not It's not on God. It's on us how, how, how much we want God, how much we'll really search him. This is the reason why in Jeremiah it says, when you really search God with all of your heart, you will find him. Yeah. Because you have to push past all like all like that religious stuff and whatever somebody else is telling you like oh the lord wouldn't do that and see this not see this goes to also say it's just like you know you shouldn't put no other god you shouldn't put no god before the true living god because sometimes we can even make people gods yeah. you know what i'm saying like and we can even and believe it or not and i feel like a lot of like not all but some theologians do this they even make the bible the yeah. word of god false idol because it's like if it, huh yeah because they're like if it's not in the bible it's not that's it like right. God outside of the bible right and i'm like you know how many things are not written in the bible now this is not saying that the things of god won't be backed up by scripture it might not be written in there word for word but it will be backed up by scripture you know because god is not a liar you know, evangelism is in the Bible, but God may have you get up and go to Walmart and evangelize. Right. Now, is that in the Bible to say, oh, okay, I want Chrissy to get up right now and go to Walmart to evangelize and tell people about <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> oh, that's not written in the Bible, but it has a bi a biblical foundation. Right. Because exactly the Bible. But God right. told us directly and personally for us to have that relationship with him. Right. It's literally that simple. Right. But go ahead. Um I was gonna say, and that too is like also the spirit of religion will also even stop you from getting deliverance because do you know how many times I've seen people say there is no such thing as marine spirits? If you look yes, the word marine spirit is not in the Bible, but if you look at scripture, the Lord is literally saying he's talking about a sea serpent, Leviathan, yeah. he's the king of pride, yeah. lowercase king. And then also in the Old Testament, I remember um, it was what was it, Lord? It was um, Delilah. She worshipped um, the principality Dagon, a mermaid spirit. Yeah. What do you think that all, all these people, all these witches and warlocks are doing? They're going to the ocean at night, talking to spirits. There, the spirit realm is very complex, right. and it is real. And it's a lot that we don't know unless the Lord shows us. But marine spirits are very real. It's in the, it has, like how you said, it has a biblical foundation. Like I said, Delilah, the woman who seduced Samson and got him killed, she worshiped a whole principality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, and it's just, and even like Jezebel, Jezebel is also a marine spirit and she worships a false god who was in the waters. Even, even a lot of um, pharaohs in the Bible, they used to go out to the waters and speak to spirits that are living in the waters. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like that too. But it's like, if you're saying, oh, there's no such thing as, as a marine spirit, how are you going to, how, how, how are you going to get deliverance? Or like that too, it's like, 
how are you going to like allow the Lord to like use you in the gift? Because like you might have a calling to the Marine kingdom to expose them, to walk people through deliverance, to break off generational curses of water spirits off of their bloodline. But it's like the Lord can't use you in that. I mean, he, he can, he can do anything, but you know, he's going to find somebody else because it's like, if you're not going to do it, the Lord is going to still do what he needs to do for his people. He's going to find somebody else. And I was like, you're missing out on God. Like how you said, because it's like, you're putting the Lord and the things of the spirit in a box all because the word marine spirit isn't exactly in the bible but it has a biblical foundation also this too when the lord was delivering um legion um yeah yeah, yeah this man had a spirit of legion in him and when he was casting them out the demon said, oh, can you cast us into the pigs? And then the Lord cast them into the pigs and the pigs ran into the water. Why? Out of all the things the pigs could have ran onto land, they ran into a, and pigs, they don't like water. So it's like the pigs, which you know was hosting the spirits ran into the water because the spirits lived in the water. That was their habitation. That's a biblical foundation. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that too, another scripture that the Lord is bringing up to me is that, um, when jesus was on a ship with the disciples yeah. and the water and the lord had told um the water to stop mm -hmm. who you think that he was actually speaking to the water he was speaking to the spirits in the water he oh, said i rebuke you you right you he said i rebuke you you rebuke spirits he wasn't he wasn't literally rebuking the water he was rebuking the spirits that are that dwell in the water you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but yeah. the spirit of religion is also like, I, like we were talking about it. It's, a, it's that spirit of pride that yeah. covers the ears. They're not able to hear. They're not able to see the spiritual things because they're oppressed or even some possessed with this demon, with this. Right. Demon. And so it makes it harder. And a lot of the times, you know, this scripture that scares everyone when, when the Lord says, depart from me, I never knew you. He's talking about people in the body of Christ, right. not of the world. I mean, yes, they, of course, they're already judged. But he's yeah. talking about the Pharisees, the people right. that are condemning people, the people that don't have a heart to really serve and help God's people, but they want to be seen by man. Right. The ones that, you know, these double standards. And so, you know, just even with you know we always hear molestation in the church and pastors touching little kids and a lot of the times people don't want to go to church for that and it's like that's because there was not someone in the church filled with the spirit that was able to discern what was going on to speak to this person yeah. and i think a lot of the times that idolization of your pastor or whoever you, people put them such in a box to where like okay they know what they're talking about i'm going to listen to them and then when that happens whatever the pastor is dealing with it's going to spread into the church it's going right. to spread the congregation you're going to bleed on your people right. and then right. you have a whole bunch of people that are mimicking and worshiping this person right and so they don't take heed to other people they don't take heed to spiritual things and it's it's really sad because we're we're in a time where so many people are being deceived and so many people are going into church and being deceived and then god's pulling a lot of people out of church i mean there's just so much going on there's the separation has been happening but it's like when are we going to start seeing okay god is showing me something i need to take heed to this even if nobody else believes me even if no other person is understanding god could be using you and you alone to come against something right why we have to be bold in christ we have to put everything that we have into him we have to stand firm in in our foundation which is the rock which is jesus christ and we have to get to know him for ourselves right. because you know man like we were saying can lead you wrong can steer you wrong man can be filled with pride in, in a second right. and then you this person you become led by a blind guide and then what does it say they fall off and off of it into a ditch right. because right. led blindly by someone who doesn't even know the truth this is why we should never put man on a pedestal yes right. we should respect if god puts somebody in a position to honor them and to take you know, heed to the council, but like we were saying, it always needs to be brought back to God because man can be wrong at any time. And just 
that moment when you decide to take that man's word for it instead of bringing it back to god then you're in then you're in disobedience yeah. then you're out of the will of god and i can even say that speaking from experience when i was with this person who she had been doing ministry for years and i started to take heed to what she was saying i was attacked so bad it was the worst feeling ever to the point where i was on the floor crying day after day after day and my son had looked at me and he said mom jesus is going to forgive you like what's wrong get up and i was so torn and broken but i was realizing then you know god was taking me to through this um crushing process every prophet goes through a crushing period to where you're broken completely and then he builds you back up but i was listening to this person because this person seemed to have known more than I did. And maybe I wasn't really hearing at the time is what I was thinking. And so I allowed that and the Lord allowed everything that happened to me to happen, but it built me up to where I will never not listen to what God has to say. The first scripture that he took me to when I came to myself, because I was so down I mean, it was the worst. It literally felt like the Lord took his hand off of me. And I know he didn't, but it was just so much that I was going through. And so he allowed all those things to happen because I listened to her. And when I got into my word, I hadn't read in like days. And when I finally literally mustered up the strength, crawling to the bed mm -hmm. and opened up my word, he said, it was a rebuke immediately. Woe to those who put man's words above God. Woe to those people who put man on a pedestal. You're you're listening to what this woman said instead of what I said. Right. And after that, like, this is why it's it's it I have been on this journey of I don't care who believes me or not. I don't care if the Lord tells me to tell my mother something, to tell a pastor something, I'm gonna tell you that because I will never put another person over God. Ever. Because right that person can cause you to go to hell you're making that person your god and the bible says you shall not have no other gods before me right so in sense, you're making another person your god because you believe that they know more than you do but the lord says that he will use the foolish things to confound the wise so you may be in ministry for 10 plus years but god may use somebody like me and you that have been in ministry for three years to trump that person and to tell that person you need to step down you need to repent because you're not in right standing with god you have been doing traditions of man and you're quenching the spirit of god but, god will use the foolish things the tatted up ones the people that are prostitutes pimps and hoes he is going to use them to <laughs> oppose the spirit of religion and to make them back down because you guys have become cowards right. this is what right. the church will be judged first how dare you right. how dare you put jesus on something that he ain't in how dare you condemn your brothers and sisters and make yourself feel better than anybody when you're living a double life how dare you mm. how dare you mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because i think that thing really did something to me because it's like i i be like empathizing for these people because when you go to church it's like they make every, and, and this is a lot of churches i've been to, you know oh you're new you don't you have to sit down and listen and and, and yes we yeah. should all be servants we should all be students yeah. before we become teachers but if the lord is giving that person a word or something you can't just shut them up you can't yeah. i went to a, the when i first went to that church they told me any any word of the lord has to be given to the apostle first yeah. and uh and and I, was like, I was like okay you know because i was new like i said i had just began my walk so they were like it has to be given to the apostle like this is church protocol which number one i can understand when people when the churches are dealing with witches and all these different things you can't just be giving people words and causing division in the body but that wasn't the case with me and the lord literally had me give this woman a word and i was like okay like all right, Lord, I'll do it with, I was like, I always do this. I was like, if she gets up and goes to the bathroom and leaves, cause we were all like listening to the word, then I'll follow her and I'll go give it to her. And as soon as I like thought that she went into the bathroom. And so I went, I got up and I followed her and I told her what the Lord had said. And she had looked at me like, she was like, hold up. First of all, and I know she was trying to like, rationalize it in her head but she you couldn't she couldn't deny the word that was given because it was from god mm -hmm. but she was like thank you but next time make sure you just take it to the apostle first 
before you bring it to me. And I was like, girl, bye. <laughs> like, I kind of hey, if God tells me to give somebody a word, I'm not taking it to nobody. You're not about to dilute the word. Right. And I'm not about to quench the spirit of God in me to wait to give it to somebody else. That's not what he said. Right. Yeah, and that and that that be pissing me off because it's just like, bro, don't try to little dog me. <laughs> Because you got nah, bro. Because it's little zoid. Oh my god, bro! It's like not. And see, this is the reason why. It's like, see, the spirit of religion. It really, really attacks people who first found the Lord in church. Come on, yeah. Like, see, like people like me and you. It's like. You know, I did grow up in church, but I was, girl, just whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with you, you know, you went to church sometimes, but it was just, like, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, we really, really got to know God when it was just directly just Holy Spirit and just us. He didn't go through a man. And, you know, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm trying to say? Because God, God will use whoever or whatever to get to his people because he desires, you know, for his people to be saved. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, like, People who are like us, who directly, you know, got counsel and wisdom from Holy Spirit. And, you know, maybe they use people because it was a couple of people the Lord did send to me to, like, help me. You know what I'm saying? To, like, guide me and tell me, give me the prophetic words or whatever. But it's like, it was just mainly just, I wasn't in a church when I was, when I first came in. Right. Like, I was, it was just me and just the word of just God. And the Lord was just teaching me and training me and just, so it was like, now when I do go to churches, I peep stuff. And, you know, when in that church i would peep like why is there anybody hearing from the lord or why right. y'all keep saying go to apostle what do i need to go to apostle for to tell him that the lord told me I need, i'm going on travel ministry right. what <laughs> i'm not doing that <laughs> no bro that, no yeah, that really did do something to me too like <laughs> what, so, hey, so wait whenever god told me to come here who was i supposed to go to to act <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And it's like, like, again, I, it's, it's like, it's like, it's not an issue to respect and honor your apostle, your leaders or your pastor or your spiritual parents. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, stop going to man all the time. Right. It's like, we should first run to, even, even if you do have a pastor or an apostle over you, you know, over you that the Lord is like, you know, leading you to like, you know, to help you and to give you counsel. That is fine. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, Go to God yeah. first. Yeah. And if the Lord tells you in prayer, okay, you know what? Reach out to, you know, your spiritual mother. Then go to your spiritual mother. You know, the Lord will use her, whatever. But it's like, stop, like, going to man first. And that's exactly what people used to do in that church. And I used to be pissing me off. Because it's just like, why are you, why are you saying, oh, go to apostle about this? Or you're saying, oh, yeah, you're not, you're not a, you're not a prophet or apostle yet. Baby, first of all, I know what the Lord told me. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, like, or who ordained you? What, um, the right. Lord ordained right. me to be confidence? Like, what do you mean? It's tradition of man. Like, and this is also like the, just the, the idol worship. Yes, it's okay to show respect to someone over the church, but this is a thing that we're missing about church. And it really aggravates me. We, the Bible says we are supposed to go out and make disciples of the world. So when you right. are in sin, you come into the church, you get right. refined, you get reborn, you get delivered, you get equipped, you get the tools that you need to be able to go out to the world right. and make right. disciples. Right. Your church is healing you, fixing you, and doing everything that it needs to be doing to prepare you to go out and do the same thing. Right. But the problem churches is becoming a revolving door people are going right. out and coming back in they're living the same on the weekend partying turning up getting drunk and then coming back in getting delivered again and doing it all over again mm -hmm. this is not the way that god intended for the church to be yeah we have um, so many adolescents and so many people that are going back into the world because they're not being properly discipled right. they're not getting deliverance that they need they're not building their foundation on biblical principles and they're they're most likely getting trained by pharisees or people who don't really carry the spirit of God, mm -hmm. thinking that they have to do all these different things instead of getting into the word and figuring out even your identity in Christ. Right. Because a lot of times we have these insecurities that play on us. And if you don't know who you are in Christ, then what, what you're gonna just be led by everything. Yeah. We have to confirm and know who we are in Jesus. We have to, this is why we have to study the word. We have to invite the Holy Spirit in everything. Right. We can't 
go off of what man says. We can't just go off what your church says. If you've been at the same church for 20 something years and you ain't made no disciples and you ain't got no ministry, you're just going to go. What are you doing? Yeah. Depart. Depart from me. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. Right. And that's, it's not works based but we're going to do works. People keep missing the point. It's like, oh yeah, I, I believe in God and, and I, you know, I'm saved by grace through faith. Yeah, but you're a couch Christian. You're not doing anything. You're right. not making the gates of hell nervous. You're right. sitting out being hit with the same stuff over and over, living in these continuous cycles, right. continue to backslide and you can't get set free. Right. And you know what? The enemy does that. He uses these things as a tool of distraction and, and a cycle to where years are going by and you're still dealing with the same things until guess what? No salvation. You're going to hell because you did not take the steps that you needed to. You didn't break the cycle. You allowed the, the enemy full dominion over your life. Right. We are curious about our walk. And have, we have to understand, like, we can't just be depending on churches. Right. God has put a lot of people out of church. And it's because yep. people are not getting what they need to in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The most I got what I needed was just me and the Lord, <laughs> not not church, period. Like, you know, I, you know we're in the church right now. Absolutely not. Yeah. And then that's when people, when people are, oh, you're not underneath a pastor. No. And that too. Please stop saying, oh. <laughs> Oh, you need a covering. You need a cover. Bro, the Lord is my covering. And now that I'm married, my husband is. Like, That's why you know I mean? Montgomery's whole ministry is called Covered by God. Because it's people kept asking her who's her covering. Right. Right. Putting people up like her, like us, who are going right. to oppose that spirit. Right. Who's your covering? Right. Jesus? Right. I didn't think of her, man. I didn't begin, like, like, so confident. I'm like, what do you like me? And it's just like... That, that, so that, was, oh my gosh, Holy Spirit! What? Holy Spirit just literally dropped something on me. What? Who's your covering? Who's your God? Right. Yeah. Who's your yep. God? Who is your God? Mm, and Jesus, what you mean? Right. Oh, I right. I never understood. Even like, even like being like in like that church, bro. It's like. Like, you know, like, he would make it seem like, oh, like, if you leave that, if you leave that church, like, you're going to lose your covering. Yeah. Baby, first of all, the mindset that I had in that church is now broken off. The, the, the spiritual soul ties is now broken off. I'm in a much better space. Like, what do you mean? Like, no, honestly, but being in that church, it's like you quench the covering of Holy Spirit over me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, girl. And, and so we have to even stop, like, because if people are at a church and the Lord is directing them to do something, they will be like, okay, let me get, you know, let me get this approved or whatever. And God is the last say, you know, mm -hmm. because people, God could be using that to even test you. Are you going to stand on what I said? Or are you going to go to man? And a lot of people aren't able to really understand the voice of God and hear the voice of God. So they do make an idol out of other people because yes. you're not hearing God correctly, but that's your mm -hmm. fault yeah. at the end of the day because you're not doing what you need to do and yeah. way out. Like, right. Let me just ask a person. That's why a lot of the times people, you'll be able to discern when you're in ministry, people that constantly want you to pray for them and they're not doing it for themselves. They're trying to make you do the work for them. Yeah. God will remove you out of their lives or remove them from yours because you cannot if you are really seeking God and trying to go deeper with God, he is not going to allow you to be an idol or a God in somebody else's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even this, this is even something with the, with the pastors, like you can tell that they want the a, a, approval and applause of man, because if somebody was to come to me and I was an apostle or bishop of the church or whatever, if the Lord was directing them to do something and they were coming just to ask for my counsel, I would literally say, what did you hear the Lord say? Stand on that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to give you direction and then I could be out of order of what God's trying to do in your life. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. And then the blood will be on your hands. But people that are pastoring churches, they they like that. It's the same as what Satan wanted. He wanted the apostle yeah. of man. He felt worthy of praise. Yeah. So the, the yeah. pastors are not correcting their congregation. They're not correcting themselves. And it, they're allowing themselves to be exalted. Yeah. They're Positions way too far. At the end of the day, we are all supposed to be servants helping and leading each other. Yeah. Not also you. This is my, my church. Absolutely. Bye. 
Yeah. <laughs> that girl said five. Yeah. Uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. That was a deep and real question. Who is your God? The Holy Spirit literally gave that to me while we were sitting here. And it was like, oh my gosh, that's what they're literally asking you. They don't even know. And that, that's the thing. When you are, have the spirit of religion, the enemy can use your mouth. He can use your mouth even when you don't have the spirit of religion. When you have any type of open door, when you're in any type of sin, the enemy can use your mouth to say whatever, to condemn other people, to make people feel bad about themselves whatever the enemy can do that and a lot of the times when you don't understand spiritual law and you don't have an understanding of what's going on in the spiritual realm you don't understand your mouth can be used to say something against somebody you don't yeah. understand like people and this is another thing the church doesn't teach the spirit spiritual the spiritual part of god mm. this is why when we have people that are like us and william and other people that come out and they're teaching the deeper things of god and the spiritual side you have religious folks oh no uh -uh, i ain't never heard that i ain't never read that okay keep quenching the holy spirit and you'll continue to be where you're at for the next 30 years right right come come on <laughs> <laughs> no because i cannot stand the spirit of religion like it makes me like cringe and it's just like you're and it's just like you the same say spirit that killed religion. jesus right and it's like you say like you want a deeper like people say they want a deeper relationship with the lord but it's like how right. when it's just like you're not listening to anything that the lord is saying right. you're literally pushing because it's like you're so used to god being in this you, you, it's, it's like you're so used to the lord doing like this and that that okay that's what the lord did last season in your life what about this season right oh well like the lord did like you know i even had like you know like one of like my old like mentees like i'm not saying no names but like one of my old mentees it's like oh like the lord didn't tell me that what okay well i don't know what to tell you because like the lord right exactly and it's just like placing the lord in a box like quenching holy spirit like and, and, and that's another thing you know for a whole nother time but when people say you know oh well god didn't tell me that but god has placed you in my life for or me in your life to help you we're not taking heed to even that right and that if god paid. So, like you had we both had mentorship programs and these people this is why you have to watch what people say because you can see how the enemy can snatch people away from what god is trying to do you felt so led in your spirit in the beginning to join right you felt that the lord told you that this is what you needed to do so you should give it your all. But the moment that something is not pleasing to your flesh, you don't want to hear it. You don't want to do it. And that's what people do to God. Yeah, they oh, do. I didn't say that, you know. Or, but it's like, you didn't tell me that. That's people's favorite word. Yeah. Or oh, Lord didn't tell me that. He just did through me or through whoever. Like, what do you mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, But people don't want to take heed to that and i mean even and this is why even what we say you know take it back to the lord you should always yeah of course you should always take it don't take my word for it Shoot. the lord just told me to look at the scripture and i'm trying to see what this scripture is hold on what? <laughs> do you have your bible yeah deuteronomy 23 deuteronomy 23 okay let me see, Deuteronomy 23. Those excluded from the congregation? Read it. Okay, hold on, let me see. Uh, okay, I'm reading out an NLT version. If a man's testicles are crushed <laughs> or, or his penis is cut off, he may not be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. If a person is illegitimate by birth, neither he nor his descendants for 10 generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. No Anamite or Moabite or any of their descendants for 10 generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. These nations did not welcome you with food and water when you came out of Egypt. Instead, they hired Balaam, son of Beor, from Pethor. <laughs> Yo, these names and distance um to curse you but the lord your god refused to listen to 
but but the Lord your God refused to listen to Balaam. He turned the intended curse into a blessing because the Lord your God loves you. As long as you live, you must never promote the welfare and prosperity of the Anamites or the Moabites. Do okay. not det So wait. In the beginning it says what verse was that? Those of illegitimate birth and their descendants for 10 generations may not be included in the assembly of the Lord. What is the assembly of the Lord? His house? Yeah. And so then on, what was it? Verse four, these nations did not welcome you with food and water when you came out of Egypt. Instead, they tried to hire Balaam, son of Beor, from Pethor, and Aram Naharam to curse you. That is what's going on in the church. Coming out of Egypt, the Exodus. Yeah, come out of like out, Yes, they're coming out from bondage. God is bringing in the harvest. Yeah. But when they're coming into these churches, they're not feeding them. With they're the not giving them the water. Word of they're God. not giving them the food. What are they doing? Instead... It says that they're high. They, so basically, they they're giving them false gods. They're trying to teach them and show them the ways and the tradition of man of Balaam of Baal. Yeah. And, and and that's even just crazy because literally that wasn't one of the scriptures I had. I was actually about to close, and then the Lord gave me that. But this is what the church is doing. Yeah. God is in the harvest. People keep saying, "Oh, the harvest is coming. The harvest is here. Been here." But right. we're not taking care of the harvest. Right. They're going. Back out to the street they're going back to the world to the things that are comfortable they are the seeds that fell by the wayside because they weren't healed they weren't delivered they weren't being fed the word of god they weren't being fed the food they weren't being washed with the waters yeah this is why judgment is definitely coming judgment is coming to the church to the house of god a lot of people will be leaving the churches a lot of people will be delivered from the spirit of religion and this brings me even back to two years ago when the lord gave me this vision it was the lord was telling me there will be no more man-made church there will be no more church building there will be gatherings and that's what an assembly is hallelujah an assembly is a gathering of god's people an assembly is a gathering of of the church so there will no, there will no longer be traditional churches. Everybody's going to this church building. It's going to be a symbol, assemblies, right. people of God gathering around these places. Maybe going to conferences, going to places like Tiffany Montgomery when she goes around and, and gives these words and does things. It's going to be gatherings. It's not going to be an actual church. Right. God is breaking that. That will be no more. There will be no more church. Right. And I mean church as in the building. Right. right. Because, because we are we the church. church. Right. And the last thing I need if somebody editing or saying something over my words, you will be uh, rebuked. Don't play with me. I need the actual <laughs> physical church. Be no more physical church in these days to come. Yeah. And you see that church caught fire because what that pastor was teaching. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lord made every church catch fire. That is what not. Is, what, was, what church? This man was saying that the Bible was contradictory, and and he was a pastor of that church, and his church caught fire the next day. I wouldn't be surprised at the Lord because the next thing that the Lord is going to do, he will not flood this earth. But I wouldn't be surprised if every church that did not carry his spirit would be inflamed. I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised neither. The Lord used to do that back in the Old Testament. <laughs> false, false fire. Same God. Mm -hmm. Same God. He's the same God. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, for real. Mm -hmm. like, do you, I mean, do you have any like last words? Um, yes. Um, the Lord was bringing me to the book of Malachi, and like basically how like it's like um in the first chapter, it's like they it's like the Lord was like rebuking them because it's like they were they were doing like all the things that the Lord commanded them. To, huh? I was reading a comment. Oh, go ahead. Right. I'm like. <laughs> What? <laughs> but yeah, they were doing all the things that the Lord wanted them to do as far as like, you know, sacrificing animals, as far as doing like these like different type of rituals that the Lord commanded them to do. But it's like they were doing it in vain. Mm. You know, it's like a lot of these churches do stuff in vain. They're just doing it because that's what they're used to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, even if the Lord is telling them to do certain stuff, 
they're only doing it out of just strictly obedience and yes of course we should be obedient to the spirit of god regardless of how we feel or not because it's not about us it's about the lord and his work but it's like the lord does not want us to do stuff just just because he said so he wants us to do it but also how's your heart posture you know what i'm saying and this is, and this is a lot of like these churches as well too it's like okay yeah you're having church on Sunday. Or even the people who are going, yeah, you're going to church on Sunday. You know, you're like, oh, hallelujah. You know, you fall now in the spirit. You know, you're getting high in the spirit. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, you're catching the Holy Ghost fire. You're on fire for a But it's like, it's all about the feeling. And it's like, but where is the surrender? Yeah. You know, and where is, where is like the where surrender? Sacrifice. To, right. Where, where is the real sacrifice? Come on. You know, to, to the Lord where's the sacrificing of your flesh because just like how jesus was a sacrifice and we're supposed to be like jesus we're supposed to flesh every day every day and i'm gonna have to tell you this when we get off but the lord just he wants us to do another video next week okay. but pertaining to this but whatever it pertains to what you're literally talking about right now so go ahead uh, that is no coincidence but yeah uh, but and it's just like these churches will be judged because it's just like you're not bringing in like what the spirit of the lord is saying like how you just said it, it's like people are going into church but they're still living in sin they're still dealing with the same problems they still have the same generation of Christ that they had when they were younger when they first came into christ and this is another reason why also people they be like oh, well, i don't want anything right Hey, but it's not, this is another reason why people they don't want to have anything to even do with the Lord anymore because they're like Lord I've been in the same position and I've been going to church I've been doing this that and a third for years and nothing's changed I'm still broke I'm still living in the same house driving the same car I'm you know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm right like yeah I mean yeah it is true but it's like the churches will also be accountable but so will that person but you know what i'm trying to say but it's like that person came there looking for god but see this is the thing too it's like you can find god anywhere not just in a church right you know what i'm saying like you don't need to you know you know feel the lord in church yes god will be in church and he will meet you where you're at but you can find the lord you can talk to the lord you can be in a prophetic atmosphere without church right you know what i'm saying like people and, and i don't and i really think that people really do not understand because it's like people are just so used to church and like how you said this is the reason why the lord is pulling people out of the church because it's well the church building i should really say because the church has been doing their job or not at all some on to next. are huh? on to the next right and this is the reason why me personally i've never found a home church yet me neither you know and and i wouldn't care if i never did yeah, right like unless the lord be like okay you know what go ahead but other than right. that but that, so but that also like people want to go to church also for the wrong reasons people want to go yeah. to church for other people people want to go to church you know because they think that this church is going to solve their problems but it's like I don't care if you go to church every Sunday, if there's no transformation and you're not really doing what you need to do for your walk, you're not going to be able to tell God, oh, well, my pastor didn't teach me that. Okay, well, why didn't you open your right. word and, and act? Right. Study yourself to show it to prove. Like, amen. Girl. And so, you know, look, they be in the comments wanting to fight, but at the end of the day, the Lord is pulling people out to church. If you got a problem yeah. with that, then take it out with him because okay. the church building has become a, a den of thieves mm -hmm. of robbers mm -hmm. you know, i wouldn't be surprised if things started happening around everybody's local church now yeah, in some churches, and there are good leaders with good hearts and they're really helping people but there's a lot more churches that just are it's probably 90 percent are yeah. supposed to be doing and god is not pleased right. and he's going to judge the house first you have to that's the order of things so right. at the end of the day, if you feel like the Lord is pulling you out of church, get out. If you feel like he's pulling you into a church, go in. But at the end of the day, it's up to you and whatever God is telling you because your walk is not going to look like everybody else's. But I will say whatever the Lord tells you and he gives you, you stand on that. If the whole world comes tumbling down on your head, you stand on what the Lord said. Because right. right. he has the power and authority to put you in heaven or hell. He is the only one that can kill the spirit. Not only the flesh, only man can kill the flesh only man can say things that hurt you physically but that's it after you're dead and gone your spirit is going to live on so you have to decide are you going to secure your eternity or are you going to try to 
continue your life people pleasing and, and, and tithing to your church and doing whatever your pastor says. Right. You got to Right. Mm -hmm. be about offerings. I'm crying. They do. And no. then, and then if the thing is, if the people, if the churches were doing what they were supposed to with the money and, and pouring into the widows and to the poor, the taking people off the street. Yes, yeah. and it would be uh, be done the right way, but they're they they driving new cars. Hey, they doing what getting bigger churches. Mm -hmm. They're doing mm -hmm. something they're not supposed to be doing. So you're messing up the church's money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. was that mm -hmm. all you had to say, or you you? Oh um, yeah. Out. Yeah, I'm about to say y'all. Ah! I'm roughing it. <laughs> Feel me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you guys. Thank you you guys for watching i'm gonna close this out father god in the name of jesus we just thank you father we thank you for your spirit your holy perfect spirit that convicts and brings all truth that searches the deeper things of you and brings it back to your people father god we just thank you for everything that you're doing within our lives and within the people's lives who are watching this live god and we just ask that you give more people just a deeper encounter with you a deeper relationship with you that you're able to pull that spirit of religion out of them to pull that spirit of pride out of these people father god and that you can bring order into your church to bring it back into your house father god we're asking that you tear down every demonic altar in your house and build it back up with just praise and worship to you father god we ask that you cut it down that you sever every demonic tie that is attached to the churches if it is even the leaders may all the leaders fall into true repentance to turn their lives over and really surrender to you so that your people will no longer be broken or hurt we just lift your name and we thank you, God. We thank you for the things that you're already doing. We thank you that you're still working it around it and turning it around in our favor, Father. And we just thank you. I thank you for it is already done. I thank you for the lie. I thank you for my sister. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Girl, he got all my started shaking a little bit. Who? No, for real. <laughs> Girl, I love you guys, right. and we will see y'all next time. All right, bye y'all. Okay, and if you, if there are women that want to join, we have a group um, becoming. A lot of people said that they couldn't find it. You can't find it. You can inbox one of us, and we'll send you an invite. It, only for serious people. If you're gonna be inactive in the group, you will be deleted out the group. So we love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but for real, because this is only for women who are really serious about their relationship with the Lord. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk, if you're still living in sin, if you're lukewarm, but it's like, you have to still be serious about getting right with the Lord and deepening your relationship with the Lord. So if you ain't finna be active, and you ain't finna be saying stuff for just watching, you might as well not even join. That's just us just being real bit because you will get yeah, you know. So we've been there, done that, and we see what the people need. God has shown us. Yeah. It's only for people that are serious about their walk. So right. if that ain't you, go on and keep scrolling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We love y'all. Bye. Right, bye.